I've tried a lot of attack techniques. I've spent a lot of time on some of them. Each time I tried something new, it was because I was copying someone else who could attack better than me, or I had just stumbled onto it. I've been making attacks my top priority for dozens of sessions over the last few months. The technique I present in this video is the most reliable, easiest, and efficient that I've found. I'm always open to new and better techniques, but I'm pretty confident that this one will serve me well until they're found. This is a long video because it covers what you do, how you do it, how it feels, and why it works best for both the toe side and the heel side tacks. I encourage you to use the chapters in the description to jump to the section that you want to watch, but of course I also encourage you to watch the whole thing. This technique uses the same dynamics of wing, foil, and body weight for both the toe side and the heel side tacks. The bio biodynamics needed to make them happen, of course, are very different. With practice and persistence, the tack can be learned with any setup. However, it's easiest to learn with high-performance foil that has a good glide and ability to go slow, plus a wing with a tight canopy. Ideally, you practice on a day and location with moderate wind and flat water. Finally, it will be easier to master if you have already adopted the basic posture and control techniques I've covered in their own videos and described in my blog. See the links in the description. It's always a good idea when learning any new major technique to start on the beach to gain some muscle memory with the wing handling before heading out to the water. For the tack, I recommend recommend starting to learn the toe side to heel side first. Here you see me winging toe side on a beam reach. I like to draw a line in the sand across the wind or place something in its stead to help me align my feet properly going in and out of the transition. Start on a beam reach. Bring the wing directly overhead by actively using both hands. The front arm bends to bring the front hand to a position upwind of your head. The back hand pushes away just enough to rotate the wing on its center. Keep the back hand on the wing until it's in a neutral, horizontal position directly over your head. Then these things all happen simultaneously. Shift your gaze to the upwind horizon. Simulate carving upwind by bouncing your foot around as you pivot on your back foot. Switch your new front hand onto the wing as soon as the wing is above your head. After your board passes the eye of the wind, move the front of the wing towards the new side as you continue carving. Grab the back hand as soon as you can and power up the wing to complete the turn. Do this several times, spending at least 15 minutes. The more automatic the arm and hand movements are, the better. Timing is critical with the tack, so you can start to learn it even on land. As you bounce your foot around the turn, be sure to hold the wing directly overhead until your front foot, which is the front of the board, is directly upwind. Only then will you bring your wing to the new side. Before attempting your first foiling tack, do several glides like this in the same stance and direction. This helps you to learn to shift your weight forward as you lose speed. I recommend learning the toe to heel tack first. For your first attempts, start going fast across the wind on a beam reach, which is much easier than when riding closer to the wind. Bring the wing directly overhead by actively using both hands. The front arm bends to bring the front hand above and upwind of your head. Your back hand continues to hold the wing, pushing away just enough to bring it horizontal and directly over your head. Shift your gaze to the upwind horizon. Focus your awareness mainly on the foil. The body position required to go fast on a beam reach will have set you up to carve up into the wind as soon as you have released the power in the wing. 
switch your new front hand onto the wing as soon as the wing is horizontal above your head. As you turn into the wind, you will lose speed. This will require you to shift your weight forward to maintain flight height. Use both knees to minimize any angular pumping motion of the board so you glide smoothly into the turn. As soon as your board has come straight into the wind, these things happen simultaneously. Move the front of the wing towards the new side. Bring the new backhand onto the boom. Tighten the turn of the board by leaning it a bit harder into the turn. With the stance I teach, this is done mainly with the back ankle, pressing your toes down into the board. This brings the board back underneath you. Let's review that again at full speed. Bring your wing over your head. Shift your hands. Bring the wing to the new side and power back up. Here's another example. The hand switch is slightly different. Heel to toe tack. I recommend you learn the toe to heel tack first. Start on a beam reach. Bring the wing directly overhead by actively using both hands. The front arm bends to bring the front hand to a position upwind of your head. The back hand pushes away just enough to rotate the wing on its center. Keep the back hand on the wing until it's in a neutral horizontal position directly over your head. Then these things all happen simultaneously. Shift your gaze to the upwind horizon. Simulate carving upwind by bouncing your foot around as you pivot on your back foot. After your board passes the eye of the wind, move the front of the wing towards the new side as you continue carving. Switch your new front hand onto the wing, grab the back hand as soon as you can, and power up the wing to complete the turn. Do this several times, spending at least 15 minutes. The more automatic the arm and hand movements are, the better. The big motion towards the new side that I show here is only needed when you've lost speed and you need to yaw the board around to the new side quickly. Time spent on land can save you twice the time on the water. The heel to toe tack is done with the same wing and foil movements. The biodynamics are different. For your first attempts, start winging across the wind on a beam reach. This is much easier than when starting closer to the wind. Start by going as fast as you are comfortable. Bring the wing directly overhead by actively using both hands. The front arm bends to bring the front hand above and upwind of your head. Your back hand continues to hold the wing, pushing away just enough to bring it horizontal and directly over your head. Shift your gaze to the upwind horizon. Focus your awareness mainly on the foil. The body positioning required to go fast on a beam reach will have set you up to carve into the wind as soon as you have released the power in the wing. Twist your upper body toward the new direction. As you carve into the wind, you will lose speed. This will require you to shift your weight forward on the board to maintain flight height. Use both knees to minimize any angular pumping motion of the board so you glide smoothly into the turn. As soon as your board has come straight into the wind, these things happen simultaneously. Move the front of the wing towards the new side. Tighten the turn of the board by leaning it a bit harder into the turn by digging in your back heel. If you haven't switched already, Bring your new front hand onto the wing and power up with your new back hand. This brings the board back underneath you. The biggest difference between the toe side and heel side tack is the hand switch. You can switch your hand anywhere from when you're going straight upwind to after you've swung your wing to the new side. In this tack, I've switched my front hand earlier because I've got plenty of speed, so I don't need to bring the wing far over to the new side to complete the turn.
Here's another example. I've started the tack higher to the wind, so I have to make a tighter turn, bringing my wing further over to the new side before I switch my hands. Here they are side by side with a tighter turn to the left. I delayed the hand switch so that I can bring my wing more dramatically to the new side if needed. But because I lean my body weight so far into the turn, I don't need to use my hand to lean it. When you start to tack closer to the wind, things happen a lot quicker and you have to make more dramatic body movements. So when first learning the tack, remember to start from across the wind on a beam reach. How it feels to tack. Before you release the wing to initiate the tack, be sure there's even pressure toe to heel across your back foot. Feel the amount of pressure on your front foot too. When you bring the wing overhead, Feel the reduced pressure on your feet and the amount of force it's taking you to hold your wing into the wind. Throughout the turn, feel your back foot regulating the angle of radius of the carve to keep it constant as it responds to waves and wind speed changes. When you feel your front ankle bending up and less pressure on it, shift your weight forward to keep the pressure the same. As your board comes head to wind, Use all your senses to determine your speed and feel your front arm react with the perfect amount of wing shifting to the new side. As your turn transitions from pure carving to one enhanced by some yaw, swivel. Feel your legs and torso bend and twist to balance as the board turns back under and downwind of you. Let's look at the why behind this technique why it is efficient, easy, and reliable. First of all, I use both hands to actively rotate the wing all the way to neutral, rather than just briefly pushing in the back hand or lunging the wing with the new front hand to rotate it. Because it's more reproducible in different wing conditions and when using different wing sizes. In my mind's eye, I see this set of vectors driving me along and holding me up. I once dreamed of being a sailboat designer, so I studied the science behind sailing. The rest of this section discusses this technique in that point of view. To do a fully foiling tack, you must maintain your speed. To do that as you turn against the wind, you must minimize the wind drag from the wing, hence the initial full depower. Aligning the now minimal downwind force from the wing with the center of your board's rotation ensures that you can carve smoothly until you are head to wind. Thus, I hold the wing directly overhead. With the techniques that allow the wing to stay angled in the old direction at all as you start your turn, the pull slows your turning and reduces your speed. After I've passed through the eye of the wind, I tighten the turn with yaw swivel as needed. With practice, you can increase the amount of yaw when the board has slowed a lot or minimize it when your speed has remained adequate to complete the turn by carving. The biodynamics of both heel side and toe side techniques put you in a good position to make this critical adjustment. I hope you enjoy your practice sessions.